Hey guys, a lot of things in the pipeline, but it's been a while since I've done an update, so I thought I'd better push something out. Um, I figured I'd just do a quick walkthrough of some of the new stuff in 115. Uh, so first up in the release notes, we've got the updated character loader to support selectable characters and multiplayer, and also menu items to support the same. Uh, so the multiplayer is actually in command bearer sample, there's a variation now called multiplayer menu, so let's hit play on that one. Similar menu but we've now got the option to configure um, controls for two players. If we, and we can press left or right here to choose a number of players. Now theoretically there's no limit here but this is set up with two. Go start game with one player. It's going to load the wrong menu. Or we go start game set to two players. And we have two players. So in the scene itself, basically all we're doing. We've got two inputs, we've got two characters, player one's always enabled, player two isn't, player two's disabled. And then we've got a character loader to load player two, which says the character loader ID has been set. So basically, on character loader you can say set loaded players equals command bro player two. If that's been set, it will load the second player. A uh, very similar thing for character select. So if we go to alien sample variations, got a menu here with character select. So if we go in with pink alien, we get a pink alien. If we go in with yellow alien, we get a yellow alien. And if we have a look at the level, this one uses a new component, which is the multi-character loader. Um, basically just lets you specify ID and character. And again, that same method, it's a static method, character loader, set characters. So if you set character yellow alien, it'll play with the yellow alien. If you set with pink alien, it'll load the pink alien. It does also support multi, so you could say set characters yellow alien pink alien I haven't added the beige alien because I haven't set up the sprites and controller for him yet but hopefully we'll do that before release if not I'll drop him from the menu so that's a pretty simple thing but it's quite nice I don't think the character loader is something a lot of people have explored much let's go back to the release notes um, so there's a projectile aimer which you can add to uh, enemies. Basically, it's just allows enemies to automatically aim at the character. So just where you would use a projectile aimer, you can add the auto aimer and it'll pick up the character from the scene or you can assign one to it if it's a multiplayer game. Or if it's a sequenced enemy, it'll pick up the character that's assigned as the target. It's a bit hard to do a quick example of that, so I'll just leave that one. Uh, oops, keep doing the same thing. Uh, so there's been quite a few additional condition updates. So in 114, they work on platforms, on triggers, on attacks. 115, they now work on all movements. This actually really opens things up gives you a lot of flexibility in creating movements. Um, and they can also now do something when all the conditions are met. So for example, if you have a condition that when the user presses or holds a certain key and they have a certain amount of health and they have a certain amount of items, when all those conditions are met and the movement fires, you can now consume the items. So you could do like a super move that maybe you can only do when you're got a charged meter and you're at low health um, and furthermore you can now 
use a power up condition to very easily set up additional conditions on movements that are tied to having a power up. So instead of having to enable and disable movements, you can just now add this power up condition. So let's have a look at that one. I'll have to create something. So what I'm going to do, let's go to Alien Sample level 1.1. It has a power up uh, called invulnerable. So let's go going to break the prefab instance and we're going to add a new so what are we going to do? let's grab an air movement and we'll do let's do a float just make sure this so we're going to use the float movement So we'll have a very small um, float gravity, but we're going to add a power up condition. Uh, invincibility, what's it called? Vulnerable. So we're just going to dump the power up name in there. Now, if we go and get our invincible power up, let's see, I can float. I'm missing a few animations. But I'm pretty sure this float movement sends an animation state called float. Let's have a quick look. So let's just add that to our character, get rid of those errors. So for our float, let's just call this and then we have the float state. It's just going to play the airborne animation. Now we can float. So if I hold down, you see I float. So it makes it a lot easier to have more complex power ups. And so the next thing in our list is this rail platform. So a rail platform is kind of like a waypoint mover, but it locks the character onto the rail so that they can't move left and right. And then there's some options. So you can, for example, have a rail that moves automatically. Uh, you can have left and right control the actual position along the rail. So you can imagine something like a minecart where you wind, crank the shaft and it moves left or right. Um, and there's all kinds of other options. Let's go to a sample. Uh, platform samples. Open up the waypoint mover sample, and we're going to grab the waypoint mover. We're going to remove that component, and we're going to add a rail platform component. Let's just quickly flick to the scene view. Not focusing, but anyway. Create some waypoints. Then we got some options. So let's say our move speed is well, let's activate on start, deactivate when we reach the end. Our move speed is three. That's a very fast acceleration. That's fast enough. And we'll say it's an automatic. Just set the animations because we don't have any supporting animations. You just set it to idle. Um, and the other thing we need to do is add a rail movement to 
the character. No settings required on that. It pulls all its settings from the actual rail it's connected to. That should be just about it. So now, nothing I press changes what's happening to me until we reach the end of the platform. And then you can do things like, yeah, let's change it to left, right. And instead of activate on start, let's say activate on stand so I can turn it on and off. So now when I press right, I move up. When I press left, I move back. And when I reach the extent, I get back control. Turn back on it. Can't control anything except for left and right. But when I reach the end of the motion, I can move again. And if I jump back on it, oops, I think I did it now. Ah, I can control it. And then you've got some other stuff. So, for example, we can switch it back to automatic. And we can allow jump, for example, which means you can jump off it. So you could have something like you're riding a minecart down a hill and the character can jump over obstacles. Um, let's just bring that up here. And bring that up here. What we'll do, we'll add a slope boost. Yeah, that's probably about right actually. Let's see what it looks like. Here we go, a little top. And you'll see. Probably not that clear, I probably need to add a bit more. As I go down the slopes, I'll get faster, up the slopes I'll be slower. I don't even know how to get up that slope. Um, yeah, I'm going to get some sweat in that. Something like that, same idea. You get the idea. You have to play with the settings a bit. Um, you may notice, of course, that I'm sticking right on the edges wherever I touch. So you may want to either add a what's it called? Within distance condition, is it? So I'm using collider condition for example to say am I within a certain condition? Well the other thing you can do is just shrink the collider so point four there and then add some more colliders as true. Uh, Set up exactly where we waste too much time. So basically, what I'm doing here is because the waypoint collider is just this silly small one in the middle, means you won't actually start the platform until you hit the middle there. Just give you a bit more control.